Okay, what is up people? I hope you're doing fine. Um, I really apologize for the um, delay with my YouTube upload. I have had a few health issues that are resolving, so uh, I'm back to uploading a bit more frequently and I should normally increase uh, the upload to two video also per week or every 10 days. So yeah, thank you so much for your patience. Thank you for the incredible support you always give me. Uh, I'm really blessed, I'm really lucky. And um, yeah, um, so today I wanted to do a video, a quick video, I did not expect to do it, but um, I thought, why not? And it is about the AI stuff, the chat GPT thing, which is apparently uh, scaring a lot of people regarding uh, if they are going to lose their job because robots are basically going to do them uh, better than them or and or faster, so like, uh, you know, uh, graphists and uh, copywriters and ad publication and creation and stuff like that. And uh, even some people thought, you know, uh, they might actually replace PT, personal trainer, uh, because they are going to, uh, to create personal training program and, you know, uh, basically replace us. And I thought, oh, really? Let's, uh, let's see that. So, as you can see, I'm going to split the screen and you'll see my, my screen, the and I am on the chat GPT stuff, so I registered, I did the thing and, every, and, uh, and everything, and um, and uh, yeah, uh, let's see what they're going to say. So what I want to, to see is basically how is it functioning. So I know you're supposed to ask a question, and then it does its magic. So, you know, make me a bodybuilding training program. I just want to see how is it operating and what's going to do. And we will uh, review this together. Okay. Chest and biceps, okay. There is a warm up, five to 10 minutes of cardio, stretching, it doesn't say what cardio, not what stretching. So it's chest and biceps and it's legs, and it's back and triceps. So at least each time there is a warm up, you know. That's good, because uh, on a lot of training program, it's, you know, you have to do that, but how do you go from, you know, rest and baseline to this type of training and uh, yeah okay four days so we have a body part split which is very 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 generic and cookie cutter uh, so it can go for everyone and uh, and uh, yeah, but it's not personalized and um, there is a lot of caveat, you know, with body part split, turning split. In uh, first thing first is just the uh, inconvenience of having to go to the gym four to five or even six times a week. Second is the fact that you will not get adequate amount of intensity and or frequency for uh, a said muscle, you know, because you'll basically bury it under high volume on a, on, uh, on a day and then uh, for like a week or so, we will not train it again. And furthermore, there is also the uh, joint recovery aspect. Uh, like for example, here you have a day one chest and biceps, day two legs, day three back and triceps, day four shoulder and abs. So you, if you forget about muscle and we think about joint, your shoulder joint, your elbow joint, your wrist joint, uh, and your shoulder complex, in a sense, will be worked three times per week while your hips, your knees and your ankle will be only worked once. For your hips, maybe twice, depending on the hard work selection, but there, just that, there is a problem, you know, just, just, on, just that there is a problem of, about the overuse and the possible um, joint problem you can encounter with that. So let's dive in, okay? A bench press, three sets of eight out of 10. So of course, bench press is like the most famous uh, exercise for training chest and even the upper body. So three sets of eight out of 12. If this will work for some until it doesn't anymore, like I think for a beginner it would be fine, but then uh, you will need much more work and uh, different angle, especially. And then second exercise, dumbbell fly. So three sets of eight out of 10, at least the order is good. You know, bench press as first exercise, my builder, you can go heavy on it. Uh, the risk of injury is not that high when you're doing it right and with not like crazy amount of weight. 
and then dumbbell flies, which is, which is a stretcher exercise. Like if you go to with dumbbell fly first, there is a high risk of injury with that. Um, whatever, if it's like a, you know, like a one time traumatic injury or like an overuse type of injury. And then having your chest already warmed up and then moving to the stretcher exercise is kind of smart, you know. Uh, at least it's supposed to be in that uh, order. And just two exercises for chest, okay. And then we move on to the biceps portion, so double curls. So three sets of eight out of 12, again, very generic. Um, doesn't say if it's standing, seated, or if it's alternating, like you dumbbell curl, okay. Uh, and then cable and a curl, so three sets of eight out of 12. Um, it's, it's not that it's good or bad, but it's just that the optimization uh, for this day is not there. What would have been better is armor curl first to work the whole uh, elbow flexor complex, you know, the brachial, the uh, biceps, of course, the brachioradial, and also some wrist flexor, you know, like uh, with a gripping. So you would have basically worked the whole arm except for triceps, and then you move on to the more bicep-centric work because most of, uh, most of the time you lack uh, forearm and brachial uh, development and you have too much biceps in a sense. So, yeah, and you, you do it, you, you say cabled hammer curl. So I guess he, what he means is like rope hammer curl. Um, yeah, okay, why not? Yeah, but it seems it's very generic, you know. So day two, legs. First exercise squat, three sets of eight out of 12. First thing, just like bench press, it will work until it doesn't. It doesn't say if it's back squat, it just says squat, okay? Um, it doesn't say if it's low bar, high bar, to parallel, full squat, there is no indication. Then deadlift, three sets of eight out of 12. So here we have, you have a big problem. Uh, first, deadlift, it doesn't mean anything. Is it stiff-legged deadlift? Is it Romanian deadlift? Is it uh, sumo deadlift? Is it conventional deadlift? Is it from the floor? Is it partial? Is it deficit? There is no indication. And then there is the three sets of eight out of 12. Anyone that is doing deadlift hard enough and heavy enough will tell you, you go with one top set, maybe two, or you do with three sets, but um, it's more like a, a bodybuilding approach to it. And there is no way you're uh, ge getting above the eight to 12 uh, rep range, just because the limiting factor will always be your supportive, um, your supportive uh, muscle and structure. So you like your low back, your core, um, your grip, but with a grip, of course you can use straps, but still use a belt for your core. It's still going to give out way before um, your upper back, your glutes, your hamstring, and, and etc. So like the, the rep range here is totally, the rep range and the volume work is, is not justified. And then there is also the fact that it is after squats. So you're already trashing hard your quads and your glutes and depending of your form and everything variation, your lower back and your core muscle, and you go to deadlift and you go in a pre-fatigued state, core-wise on the deadlift. And guess what is getting trashed very hard on deadlift? Your core. So what would have been better is to go with deadlift first, at least your whole posterior chain, you know, would have been um, uh, trashed, you know, let's just say you're doing RDL or stiff like a deadlift or blood pull or whatever, and then you go on squat and you either do high bar squat to parallel or from squat or any kind of variation like axe squat or pendulum squat or, or Smith machine squat that forces you to be as much uh, as possible on your quads, quads bias. So basically upright torso and as much knee flexion as possible. So less hip flexion and extension. So less um, less uh, posterior chain, so glutes and lower back uh, demand, and just some squashing happening on the spine, but way less cheer force, right? So here it's not good. And then hamstring curl, three sets of eight out of 12. Okay, why not at this point, you know? And, um, and then calf rise, three sets of eight out of 12. So yet again, there is no more quad work, just squats. So better be, <laughs> it better counts, you know? And um, calf rises, three sets of eight out of 12. Uh, for most people, this will not work because uh, you need, um, you need to do tempo work, basically. If you go with three sets of, of eight and you go with normal tempo, normal um, normal execution, uh, and you, you you measure the time it took you to do a set, um, it will be around 30 to 40 seconds, max. 
12 reps, about one minute. For calves, which are highly slow twitch dominant, you need to use tempo work and or higher rep range, so 15 to 30, um, and also tempo work, which means using pose, basically, pose and uh, controlled eccentric. Not because it is magical, but because the huge problem with calves is the ankle mobility and the fact that the Achilles tendon is uh, basically used as a trampoline, a bouncing support. So you need to do pose at the top, but especially at the bottom to avoid accumulating uh, elastic energy and having this bouncing back with the Achilles tendon action. Okay, You need to actually pose down in the bottom two, three, four, five seconds, even longer, to make sure there is no elastic energy remaining in the Achilles tendon, and then you go up and it's full calves muscle at that time. But if you go just, you know, like this, normal tempo, pretty explosive tempo, um, if you were meant to have calves, you will have calves. If you have a hard time to work them, it will be all tendon work, so, you know. And again, it's very generic and I'm surprised there is only squats for um, quad work. So then back and triceps, first exercise, like pull down, then dumbbell rows. Again, there is no... Uh, there is no indication, there is nothing, you know, like pull down, what grip, what weak, what grip with, what uh, type of bar implement, you know, is it a straight bar, is it a neutral grip, uh, we don't know. Oh, coffee. And then for dumbbell row, it's the same. Is it one arm dumbbell row? Is it uh, two arm dumbbell row? Is it like uh, elbow out, elbow close, elbow right in the middle? Uh, you know, there is no bias, then it is, um, it is inadequate and not sufficient for proper back work stimuli because your back is uh, an accumulation of huge muscle groups together. Like there is a trap, there is a rhomboid beneath, there is a teres major, there is the lats that are doing the adduction mainly. There is the erector spinae, which go from the back of your neck to the glutes, basically. Um, there is also the teres minor, there is the infrasupinatus. I mean, there is so much muscle that are big and strong and you only do six sets for them for two exercises, just two angles. It's not enough. And then for the triceps, we go on the cross grip bench press. So I guess I guess he put that because uh, cross grip bench press, when he goes into the database, the chat GPT thing, uh, of like the whole training bodybuilding program on internet, cross grip bench press must come out very often in terms of triceps work. And that's why he's choosing that. Uh, it could have been dips, it could have been anything. Um, but I think I'm starting to understand why this kind of exercise pop. It's because these are the ones that comes back the most. You know? So that's why it's so generic and so uh, general looking. So again, three sets of eight out of 12. I, I won't beat a dead horse, you know, you already know. Tricep extension, what is it? Is it cable? Is it machine? Is it dumbbell? Is it barbell? Is it easy bar? Is it lying? Is it standing? I mean, is it you who is choosing, you know, the one that is not hurting your, your elbow, for example? We don't know. We may never know. And then final day, shoulder and abs. Dumbbell shoulder press, three sets of eight out of 12. Okay. Dumbbell lateral raises, three sets of eight out of 12. <laughs> you most likely will hurt something in your shoulder complex, like a tendon or a muscle or an ins uh, insertion, something by doing this kind of rep range on dumbbell lateral raises. Uh, you should go with higher rep range, like 12 to 15 also or even a circuit of isolation work for your shoulder, dumbbell front rise, as if you do not have already enough anterior delt stimuli here. Um, a good thing here would have been to go with a rear delt flies or reverse spec deck to balance out between you know, the um, adductor of the shoulder and the uh, abduction works, the uh, extension, the flexion. I mean, it, there are contexts, of course, where front rise are welcomed. No, it's not like an exercise you need to banish and never do in your entire life. But here, no. And then crunches. What crunches? 12 to 15. Oh, so it does know something. It does know something about the three sets of 8 out of 12. So magically, crunches and leg raise gets 12 to 15 reps, but not the calves, not the shoulder isolation, nothing but that. Okay. And crunches and then leg raise. You do need to... Uh, switch because leg raise will most likely be harder than crunches 
whatever variation we are talking about. So yeah, repeat this cycle, take a rest day after each cycle is complete. Remember to stay hydrated and fill your body with nutritious food to support your training, but important is that your body and just the program as needed. Um, so repeat this cycle, take a rest day after each cycle complete. So you're all supposed to go to do this chain without any rest, then you take a rest and then you chain. So it's basically a rotation on 10 days with eight days on. So obviously there is not enough rest, but uh, at least the frequency is a bit restored in the sense that you will eat everything um, two or three times uh, every 10 days. So, okay, why not? Uh, and uh, fill your body with nutritious food. What are those foods? Doesn't say, I mean, you, we would need to ask, I guess. Um, and most importantly, listen to your body and adjust the program as needed. What does listening to your body means? What does it doesn't mean? Adjust. What does adjust mean? Is it like changing the exercise, the rotation? We don't know. Uh, so yeah, uh, I think that it is very generic and cookie cutter. I think that uh, we PT have no worries to have it with that kind of thing because the base of our work is not to do this kind of program. The base of our work is if you are online just like I am, uh, you have a YouTube channel, you have Instagram and stuff like that. Your goal is to show this kind of program and say, okay, you can start there. Everyone can start there. But let's just say you have a shoulder injury. Most of this exercise might not be okay for you. So we tweak. And that's where our work happened. Um, let's just say you're not trying to bodybuild. Let's say you're trying to do a powerlifting program and this will not be adequate, of course. Um, let's just say you're, you want to bodybuild and you have a crazy chest and you have a crazy triceps, but you have no real delt and you have no biceps. Do you really think this is going to be okay? No, you need to have something fine-tuned for you. And you have, some, you have to have someone in a, in a coaching context that will get back to you as much as possible and as needed as possible to make you progress as much as possible without hurting yourself. That is a PT job, not that. So if someone wants to start training and he goes on the internet and he finds bodybuilding uh, split program or whatever, he will find the exact same thing and some variation, of course. Um, the IA just made him gain like 30 seconds stop. So, uh, I mean, as long as the IA is not capable of analyzing your your body. Um, your doesn't have access to your like your health file. You know, like the possible injuries you could have sustained, maybe the surgeries. Um, if it doesn't, um, if it's not possible to um, measure like you know the bone ratios and stuff of the anthropometry and the biomechanics that is happening inside your own body, in regard to the laws of physics in the world. Uh, if, it, if it cannot measure like something like a valgus on the elbow or like a, a varum on the knee, um, uh, or like you know, the, the flexibility and mobility of each joint compared to each other, you know, there is no way this IA can decide and um, basically um, help you, counsel you. For example, for a squat, you know, you be like, oh, you have long legs and a short torso, you might have some struggle on squat. Okay, but on squat, if you have this type of struggle, you widen your stance, you put the barbell lower on your back, you bend over a bit, and then you go down, you know? So is it really a problem of squat, or is it really much more a problem of biomechanics and maybe ankle and hip mobility, you know? This might seem a bit advanced for you, but it is actually key, you know? That's the difference between a powerlifting squat, where you're like, okay, I just want to uh, uh, squat as hard and as heavy as possible, and a bodybuilding squat, you know? A bodybuilding squat is for um, targeting the quads and you're going to do squat because it is a good tool for you to get quads and of course a guy with squatting uh, seven plate next to a guy with squatting three plate will have bigger legs but you might also have more risk for hip injury back injury knee injuries and also muscle and tendon injuries so you know it's a perfect balance and there is no balance here absolutely no balance it's very cookie cutter it's very generic so you might as well to go to bodybuilding.com or like on, on TikTok with uh, you know the wannabe personal trainer and influencer and it will be the same. So yeah, 
uh, I do not feel threatened or uh, worry about this at all because it's not about just the human, it's about the experience and the empirism and the raw knowledge that then you can apply in reality in the context of said person. So this um, is just a, a very good tool to get access to a lot of data that you are too lazy or to go search for yourself or uh, have no not much time you know, to get so yeah uh, that is it for me um, this will not replace pt at least not like that and um, yeah uh, see you soon for another video please leave a like um, check out my services uh, of online coaching if you want real stuff and not that kind of crap and um, yeah i'll talk to you very soon bye bye <laughs>